this video is going to be about the uh, chapter 2.3 and we are going to be talking about uh, subheading 1. It says describe and draw the general structure of an amino acid and the formation and breakage of a peptide bond. So basically what you have got to understand is that what is an amino acid made up of? An amino acid is made up of an amino group NH2 and then a carboxylic acid group COOH and to the central carbon is attached a residual group or in other words it is also called the variable group. Variable group means this changes and it's got a hydrogen attached to it. So the central carbon has an hydrogen and an R group or called the residual group. R is also for the word residual group. But this is the one which is variable. R is nothing in it and I'm just going to explain that to you how it is the variable group. Now I've drawn two amino acids and what is going to happen is that water is going to be removed. So when water is removed, this will be called condensation. And it's going to form a bond here between the C and the N. And this is going to be called the peptide bond. This is going to be called the peptide bond. So water formed, this is going to be called condensation. Similarly, you can see here in the diagram, this is very well given. So the water molecule exits and the bond formed between and is labeled the peptide bond. Please pause the video here, have a look at it and draw it in your copies to show the first point of the syllabus which is 2.31. Describe and draw the general structure of an amino acid and the formation and breakage of a peptide bond. Okay, now how will we break this peptide bond? Now if you want to break this peptide bond, we will have to add water. And when you add water, that is called hydrolysis. So when you add water, of course, the water is going to split up into an H and an OH. And that is why this bond is going to break. So formation and breakage of a peptide bond. That's the first point of the syllabus. Describe and draw the general structure of an amino acid. So you must know the general structure of an amino acid. You must draw it in your copies once again. And then you must show where the peptide bond is going to be formed. Then we must know that uh, we have 20 different amino acids. Now how are they different? They are different because they have a different R group. Now in glycine, you can see the R group is H. Now we usually use the first three letters for an amino acid, so it's called GLY gly. Then alanine, CH2, so that will be called ALA. Similarly, valine, cysteine, now that's the very important cysteine. Why? Because it has sulfur in it. There are only two amino acids which have sulfur in it. You must know those, one is methionine and the other is cysteine. Both have sulfur in it. Then you must know glycine, which is the smallest amino acid, GLY. Then we have others, I don't want you to be really knowing it, but I want you to just know the names of it. Proline, PRO, leucine, LEU, isoleucine, ILE, methionine, MET, tryptophan, TRP, phenylalanine, PHE. And then of course we have the polar ones, serine, threonine, tyrosine, asparagine and glutamine. Then the ones which have a positive charge is lysine, arginine and histidine. Then the one with a negative charge is aspartic acid and glutamic acid. So I don't expect you to know the names of it but I expect you to know 
that these are the different amino acids and the reasons why they are different is some are non-polar, some are polar, some have a positive charge, some have a negative charge. So these are the 20 different amino acids and they are uh, different because their R groups are different and this of course confers different properties on them. Then we come to 2.32, explain the meaning of the term primary structure, secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure. So the primary structure of any protein is the number and sequence of amino acids. So basically it is the sequence of amino acids. So by sequence of amino acids we mean is what is the first amino acid, then what is the second amino acid, then what is the third amino acid, maybe it's again Gly, then His, then uh, PHE, then again Gly. So you can see that there is one, two, three, four, five and six amino acids. So and you know that six amino acids will have five peptide bonds. So it is the number of amino acids minus one. So this will have five peptide bonds. And that makes sense because you know six amino acids is in between them there will be five peptide bonds. So if there are a hundred amino acids, if there are a hundred amino acids, there will be 99 peptide bonds. That's an MCQ which checks whether you've understood this part or not. So primary structure is the number and sequence of amino acids and this sequence, this sequence of amino acid is dictated by the famous dictator DNA. So the DNA dictates the sequence of amino acids. Now the secondary structure, as the primary structure is done so we get a polypeptide chain. Now the secondary structure is how this polypeptide chain now folds. Now if it folds into a spiral manner, this is going to be called the alpha helix. And it is due to the hydrogen bonds between the first and the fourth amino acid. First and after four, the fifth actually the amino acid. So it is the hydrogen bond. So these black lines which I have made is the hydrogen bonds. And that forms a sort of a spiral shape. And then at places there might be another alpha helix. So this is another alpha helix. So the same polypeptide chain which I drew here, now you can see the same one how is it folding. Now wherever there is this spiral shape that is an alpha helix. Now this could be once, this could be twice, this could be many times, this could be absent as well. And it would be because of the hydrogen bonds which join the different amino acids. Similarly, then there is again hydrogen bonds here. And these hydrogen bonds, when they sort of form this shape, this particular shape, that is called the beta pleated sheet. If you look up the word pleat, that's a, that's a term that we use in stitching and usually when women wear sarees we have these pleats in the front of the saree or we have pleats in the trousers for men. So you must understand what this word is and that's the folding of it. So there will be these hydrogen bonds which will hold this polypeptide and so the secondary structure is made up of hydrogen bonds and the two main names that we have to remember is number one the alpha helix and the second is the beta pleated sheet. The tertiary structure is made of four bonds. One is and I made a very simple mnemonic for it DHIV. D is for disulfide bonds. H is for hydrogen bonds again. Hydrogen bonds were also present in the secondary structure. Then I is for ionic bonds. 
and the V is for van der Waals forces. And this is also called the hydrophobic hydrophilic interactions. Hydrophobic hydrophilic interactions. Now, what we have to understand is that in the tertiary structure, we had the primary structure, we had the polypeptide chain made. Then the alpha helix, beta pleated sheet. Now, the red arrows show you further than bonding, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here, maybe here. So, these bonds will further fold the protein molecule and you get a structure something like this. So, the primary number and sequence of amino acid, secondary is the alpha helix and the beta pleated, pleated sheet. The tertiary structure is the further folding. So, there is a sulfur here and there is a sulfur here. Amino acid here has sulfur, amino acid here has sulfur. So, it is going to form the disulfide bond. So, this is going to fold in that manner. The secondary structure as I have just explained has the alpha helix and the beta sheets. Now, you can see a better diagram of that in the further folding in this diagram which I have given you. Now, there are two covalent bonds which we need to talk about. Number one are the peptide bonds which holds the amino acid together and the disulfide bonds which are present in the tertiary structure and these are strong bonds. The hydrogen bonds are weak bonds and they will be broken when you raise the temperature. If you raise the temperature, they are going to break. Ionic bonds it will be broken if we have too much change in pH. So, these are the four important um, properties of these bonds, covalent and the hydrogen and the ionic bonds.